Good morning, third graders. <clears throat> Today we're going to continue talking about a couple other new kinds of text features. So on my chart here, I made map, glossary, and index. And those are the three that we're specifically going to look at. But while we're doing that, we can still learn some more information about wolves in real life. Let's start with chapter two. So yesterday we learned a little bit about what the author thinks about wolves and how hard he's worked to try to find wolves in the wild. Today we're going to start reading this chapter. It's called Meet the Wolf. So I guess in this chapter we're going to start meeting the wolf and seeing what wolves are like. Let me start reading. That photograph of the wolf on the iceberg turned out to be the most important picture I would ever make. I shot six frames before Buster, remember that was the wolf on the iceberg, I shot six frames before Buster left, but because of the cold and my nervousness, only one turned out the way I hoped. Since then, I've learned more about wolves and how to gain their trust. There are two species of wolves in North America, the red wolf and the most common, the gray wolf. Gray wolves live around the world, primarily in the northern climates. There's two pictures on this page, so I'll look at the pictures and then read the captions. This photograph, it looks like the wolf is maybe howling. So let me read the caption and see what's actually happening. A wolf howls, oh, I was right, to communicate with the rest of the pack. The sound can be heard many miles away. That's really interesting. And here's the second picture. It looks like a baby wolf. Let me read the caption to find out what's happening there. A young wolf pup explores his surroundings after his mother moved the pups to a new area out in the open. Huh. Well, that makes me think of some questions that I'm wondering if the book will answer. Why did the mother have to move the pups to a new area? Let's keep reading and see if we can find the answer to that question. Wolf families are called packs. The pack consists of a mother and father called the alpha pair alpha pair. I've never heard that word before. I'm going to put it in my brain and then come back to it in a minute. And their offspring, the alpha female and alpha male, are the leaders of the pack. The pups usually stay with the pack for two or three years. When they are grown, one of them might become the pack leader, or the alpha pair might drive them away. They then become lone wolves who may someday join with other lone wolves to mate and form new packs. The average wolf pack is six to eight wolves. A pack of 20 wolves, including five pups, recently lived near me in northern Minnesota. This unusually large pack eventually split. The alpha pair remained nearby and the new pack went off to set up its own territory. Wolves are territorial. Hmm, that's another word that I've never seen before. They will travel great distances, about 30 miles a day, to patrol their boundaries and to find food. All right, now there's some text features on these pages that I'd like to look at more carefully. First one is another photograph on this page. Looks like that's part of the pack. Maybe they're out on the ice somewhere. Definitely looks very cold and snowy. Let me read the caption to see what the author says about it. The resident wolf pack in my backyard in Minnesota. Just 35 years ago, when I started photographing them, Wolves were one of the most hated animals in the world. Today, they are one of the most loved. My photographs may have helped change attitudes. When you do something you care about, you can really make a difference. I guess maybe that's a reason why he loves taking photographs of the wolves so much, is he knows that it changes how people feel about them. Now let me look at this other page. We have a map. So have a close look at the map. I'm gonna read the caption and maybe that'll give us a little bit of background information about the map that'll make it easier for us to read it. Wolves used to live all over the world in North America, Asia, and Europe. The map below shows the range of the gray and red wolf species today. The Arctic wolf is a subspecies of gray. Okay, so I know that when I'm looking at this map, it's gonna tell me some information about where red and gray wolves live today. Down at the bottom here, there's something that we call the key. That tells us what the different colors on the map mean. So I can see looking at the key that where everything is colored in gray, 
that's where the gray wolf lives. And when it's got these slash lines on it, that's where the Arctic wolf lives. And then the red is where red wolves live, and the yellow is where there's no wolves. So looking at the map, I can see there's a lot of area in the world where no wolves live. They don't live in like this entire bottom half of the planet, but then they do live in a big chunk of the world here and here. And red wolves only live in this tiny, tiny, tiny little section right there. Let me see if I can find Chicago on this map and see if wolves live here. Well, I know Chicago is near the bottom of this lake right here. If you look really carefully, you should be able to see it. Uh, it's yellow, so I guess no gray wolves or red wolves live here. But if you go up to Canada or Alaska, there are lots of wolves that live there. Now, I'm gonna take a break from reading these pages and jump all the way to the back of the book to look at two of my other text features. Remember when I couldn't figure out what that word alpha pair meant? I'm gonna try looking it up in the glossary to see if it's there and it'll tell me what those words mean. The glossary is almost always at the back of the book. Here it is, it says glossary. So I'm gonna look for alpha. Alpha, here it is, it's the first word. Alpha, the highest ranking wolf in a pack. Huh. So I guess that means that the alpha pair is like the, the pair of wolves that's in charge of the whole pack. And I remember that it said alpha male and alpha female. So I guess it's like a male and a female couple and they're in charge of the entire pack. That's really interesting. The glossary also has a whole bunch of other words in it, but I don't need them right now because they weren't in the chapter that I was reading. I'll come back to the glossary again later. At the bottom of this page, we also have an index. I noticed that it said something really special. It says boldface indicates illustrations. So I can look in the index for pictures of something that I want to learn about. Let me pick something now and see if I can find a picture of it in the book. I would love to see pictures of baby wolves. So let me look. I know baby wolves are called pups. So let me look under pups. P for pups, pups. Huh. I see that there's pups on a whole bunch of different pages. Let me pick one and go to it. Looks like there's a bold page number here for page number 27. So I'm gonna check page 27 and find a picture of a pup. Oh, here it is. It's so cute. There sure enough is a picture of a pup on page 27. I can use the index to find lots of different kinds of information and pictures that I might want to read about. Now it's your turn. Can't wait to see what you find out from your text today. See you later.